So Hellbar are basically everywhere now. Let's find out how they're made in a programming context. The maths behind a health bar are quite simple really. All we've got is two values, a current health value and a maximum health value. That's it. Using these two values, we can then calculate a ratio and use this ratio to scale some piece of UI or simply display it to the user. The end goal of having a health bar is to give some kind of feedback to the player, then he can make some decision based out of that. Throughout the years, we've seen many different ways of doing this. From a traditional health bar, to health containers, and even more complex but really cool ways to communicate this information to the player. In today's episode, we'll focus on the more traditional approach, which is basically made out of two main pieces of UI. The max hit point bar, that we might as well call background, and the current hit point bar, which is displayed on top of the background. The information is transferred by modifying the scale of the current hit point bar so it reflects the ratio of the current hit point versus the maximum hit point. And just like that, we've got ourselves a traditional health bar. Simple enough, right? Alright guys, so we're in the engine right now and this is pretty much the scene I'm going to be using to show you how to do the health bar. Um, let me explain really quick what's going on in here. So we've got two box collider, one over here and another one, another small one over here. Now these two box collider, they are on trigger and they pretty much have a script attached to it. And I will show that script to you in a very moment as soon as this opens. Basically what it does is uh, I've got some public bool up here, that's fine. Um, whenever I stay inside of the trigger, so whenever my player is inside of that box, and I check over here, that's the player. Whenever my player is inside of that box, I send him a message. So I'm going to call one of his function, either take damage or heal damage depending on this boolean. So if the boolean is damaging is true, then I'm going to send him this very a string that he needs to call as a function. And if it's not, then it's going to do ill damage instead. Now this very function, both of these function, they take in a float parameter, which is pretty much just the amount of damage or amount of healing. And um, I do a time the delta time on it just to make sure it actually scales with the, you know, um, right here I have 10 damage, so it's 10 damage every second. All right, so that's pretty much my script. Of course, for this to work, I need I need a, a box collider that is on trigger on both of these. I also need a player that has the player tag on it, which is the case. And I'm just going to disable that. And whoa, lava. Okay. So basically, what's going to happen is what I'd like um, the scene to do is whenever I step on the lava. I lose some HP, so as you can tell down here, I'm calling the take damage function, but I don't really have a receiver just yet, so we get this um, really messy error calls. Now if I step out of here, and I go on the healing box, it says heal damage has no receiver, so it seems to work fine, we just need to actually, well, create some receiver function. So that is pretty much how my scene is set up, and um, before we get into scripting this, we actually need some pieces of UI. And I will go ahead and just right click in here, add a new image, and this is what we're going to be using to actually start uh, making our health bar. So here's our, our uh, canvas. I am going to put my health bar at the very top here. So I'll just click here, hold shift, then click on the center anchor, and then without holding shift, click again. Put the position on 0, 0, maybe give it a small margin of say 20, minus 20 actually. Um, our health bar is going to be 500 pixel wide and 75 in height. So that's our health bar, right? Um, let me just put a background on that. Just default background for immunity. And I'll leave, I'll leave it like that. That is our background, so let's rename this. That's the background image. Now if you remember, we also need the current hit point damage or health point damage. So I'm going to right click on background again then UI and add another image as a children. Now this time what I'll do is I'll make this stretch on both axes by clicking here and I'll just put all the values on zero. Put my background the same exact one because why not. Change the color a bit 
to say greenish like this and this is our current HP so current health point bar so our goal in terms of the code is going to have to modify this scaling value over here so the one you see here in X and just scale it down until we get the appropriate ratio but now as you can tell it actually scales from the center and that's kinda I mean that could be cool but if we had, if we want to have the um, traditional feel then we're going to have to click here and actually anchor this on the left so once it's anchor on the left we should actually oh by the way um, you don't only anchor you also hold the shift button to put the pivot point as well like this and now that the pivot point is actually set towards the left you can start playing with that X value and it's going to give you the more traditional feel alright so um, we could get it started and actually start coding right away but I will add a little thing on top of that I will also right click on the background UI text and this is going to be the ratio text and over here we are going to be displaying well, the ratio basically so what I'll be doing is I'll make sure that this stretches on both axis put everything on zero then center my text and it's going to be something like 800% in white why not alright so we got pretty much all the pieces of UI we need let's go ahead and right click on our project and create a new C sharp script this is the health bar and we're going to open this up inside of MonoDevlop or Visual Studio, it's up to you. And now we are going to go ahead and just start declaring what we need. So we said that we need some pieces of UI. We're going to need a namespace for that, the Unity Engine.UI. And uh, let's make those public so we can simply drag and drop them inside of the inspector. So public image current health bar. We don't actually need the background because it never really does anything. I mean, we could have it as a reference, but we don't really need to. So we're just not going to do it. And I'm also going to create a public text, which is the ratio text. The thing I just made uh, that was just below my uh, current health bar. We also mentioned that we needed the hit point. So I'll do a private float hit point is equal to say 150 and then a max hit point, so private float max hit point which is also equal to 150 now these value could be coming from another script of course doesn't really matter and what we're going to do is we're going to do um, a start and inside of our start we're actually going to update the health bar so let me just go down here create a new function for that update health bar and uh, while we're at it actually let's just go ahead and create all the functions so we know that we need a private void Oops take damage because that's what we're calling from the floor that takes any float so float damage why not of course it could be something else um, just calling this function it's it, it can be a lot of things actually doesn't have to be floors calling this could be an enemy hitting your player and then you need to heal them or you need to take damage okay so here are all the functions I'll be using um, do we need anything else I don't think so so the main the main one the most important one is really the update health bar that's the one we're talking about in the video now take damage and ill damage is going to be different of course for every single way you have in your game to take damage or to heal damage um, what I'll do over here is I'll put the update health bar in the start so at the very beginning it actually does at least one update and what we'll do in here is we'll declare a ratio so float ratio is equal to hit point divided by a max hit point with it which is going to give us a value between 0 and 1 because hit point cannot be above max hit point basically then just after that we'll do current health bar dot rec transform dot local scale is equal to a new vector tree ratio 1 and 1 because we don't really need to modify the y and the z and just like that we already scaled our health bar and it already works basically now for the text all we gotta say is ratio text is equal to ratio times a hundred because we get a number in between 0 and 1 and it just doesn't really look good so we're gonna do times a hundred dot two string plus that little percentage sign 
Good times. So if we hit play on this, we should actually have the same exact result. Oh wait, we do have a problem here, so let me just go back. We gotta do ratio text dot text. Then we hit play, and the result is pretty much the same. Now if we walk on top of that, it says that ill damage doesn't have a receiver. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, that's because I haven't put the script, so let me just go ahead and drag and drop this on top of my player. And in my case, it has to be on the player because my uh, my floor is actually only calling this send message on the object that has the player tag on it. So it seems to work. Let's just go ahead and assign our current L bar and also ratio text to that. We're going to go under the canvas, drag and drop this here and drag and drop this there. Now we don't get any more errors. Of course, our game doesn't work because we don't really take damage. We never do remove that hit point. So that's the next step we're going to take. And I'm quickly going to code the take damage function. It's fairly simple. Hit point minus equal to damage. And uh, if hit point is smaller than zero, that means we're pretty much dead. So um, let's put the hit point on zero so it doesn't go below that number and we don't get some weird scaling issues. And just after that, I'm simply going to do a debug.log that says I'm um, dead. Sad days. And uh, pretty much the same thing goes on for the eel damage. However, we're not calling the debug.log death because we don't really die. We're just over eeled. And instead of doing minus equal, we're going to do plus equal eel. If hit point is above max hit point, then hit point is equal to max hit point. And let's actually have a look at this in the game now. So we're walking on lava, this hurts. This doesn't really hurt. Why? Let me check real quick. Oh my bad, it does actually do something. It's just that um, we never really update the health bar after doing damage or taking damage. So let's go ahead and just do that at the very end of both function. So whenever we take damage, we have to update the health bar. We could leave it in a, um, a mono behavior update from Unity, but then if you modify that every single frame, it might get a little bit too costy. So let's try this. As you can tell, up there, I'm actually taking a lot of damage. And now if I go out, I stop taking damage. If I go in here, I start healing up. And it actually reflects um, the ratio of my HP right in the bar up there. So everything seems to be working fine, oh, however, I think it's a little bit annoying that we have so many digits at the very end. So we're going to go ahead and just fix that by sending in something in our toString function up there. So the, the ratio text dot text, and by sending in this very parameter to the quote zero, we're only forcing one digit and um, it's going to just put more if it needs to. So in this case, it has more. However, we don't get decimal and that's exactly what we want as you can tell right now and now we're pretty much dead so guys that has been it for the health bar i hope you guys enjoy i hope you learned something if you did please leave me a like really appreciate that if you have any comment or question please leave them in the comment section below and i'll try to answer them as soon as possible other than that please subscribe for more tutorials like these and i will see you guys next time